Welcome to the Why Not Us podcast. We're just a few dudes navigating life and talking about it. Thanks for listening. What up? Hello, gentlemen. What's welcome, going on? Welcome to my office uh, in the bathroom again. Love it, dude. Is that coffee and not beer? <laughs> oh, funny you should ask, Joey. It is not coffee nor beer. Uh, it is bourbon, and this wow. is the only, this is the only glass I have. Um, so this is what we're rolling with tonight. You know, love it, dude. All of my rocks glasses are downstairs in their unfinished house still, and I'm just <laughs> standing here in the bathroom, drinking my bourbon, trying to well, get through the night. Well, I just feel like I saw Jordan yesterday because I feel like I did, or I did see you Saturday, I guess. Today's Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. What went down, by the way, this weekend? I don't think I even knew. Fancy baseball draft in uh, Washington, D.C., man. Whoa, that is big time. That is commitment. Yeah, so we well, tell all... Tell us about it. We all went down to Washington, D.C. on... I think everybody drove in or flew in Friday night. Um and we had the draft Saturday morning. We had it at a golf course called Renditions, which is a golf course that is like modeled after all like famous golf holes or famous holes in golf. So there was Amen Corner. Uh, there was a couple of British Open holes. There was a couple of U.S. Open holes um, from famous golf courses. Uh, and it's right outside of D.C. and like Maryland, I guess. Right, Jordan? Davidsonville, Maryland. Davidsonville, Maryland. And uh, so we had the draft at the course. They let us like sit there and we were buying drinks and we had lunch and we drafted from what, like 10 a.m. till like 1230, which was right where our tea times were. And we probably misjudged the tea times a little bit. We should have probably done 130. Uh, When Ben made the announcement about the tea times, I was like, this is not going to be enough time. These guys take forever on bids. Yeah. Um, So we were pushing it pretty quickly, but uh, we got out there. It was a little cold, a little windy. But uh, we had a good time. I shot wow. a 99 uh, with a birdie on the card. Broke 100, baby. Broke 100. Uh, Jordan shot a 95, I think, Jordan, right? Yeah, we both had a rough day there. We yeah. had good moments. I, I was, I'll be honest with you, I was great off the tee other than like one or two swings, but I, I still can't. Once I get it on the green, I'm fine. It's around the green. There was the uh, famous par 3 17th at TPC. That only two people of the eight hit the group hit the green, and I was one of those two. Hey, but yo, did the three putt. So um, <laughs> I had two three putts on the day, and that was one of them. Uh, that up. I was going to say, I bet you two putted every green because you're the best putter in the group. But I do, I, you know, I am. But I uh, unfortunately did let not. Let us putt. down. You let us down. So. Um, but yeah, and even my birdie was pretty awesome. It was like a worm burner that got within what seven, eight feet, Jordan, and I just drilled the birdie putt. Um, <laughs> uh, Joey had one where he's like, uh, "I'm gonna hit this ball real close," and he like caught it super thin and it rolled up. To like go. <laughs> Jordan, do you have the uh, confidence with the driver yet, or are you still rocking hybrid? I don't even own a driver. I haven't had a chance to um, do anything yet. So much for that New Year's resolution we talked about. Yeah, well, really. Working two basketball games a week, I don't have a chance to go. Um, a lot do of golf t- to play. A lot of golf to play this year, Joey. I got, a drop, I got a driver I'll sell you. I've got like a – it's a Callaway Extreme. I don't know the uh, all the deets on it, but I played with it maybe like one year, and I didn't love it, so then I switched to this uh, ping driver. Um. <laughs> which I still don't really love yet, but you know, I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Jordan and I saw each other and then uh, he drove back pretty quickly Saturday. I stayed and um, he had to be somewhere Sunday. So I stayed and we watched the world baseball classic by my buddy's house. And then I drove back Sunday morning. Um, so quick trip, but so maybe, wow. come, maybe come an annual thing. So this we're, was uh, a fantasy baseball draft. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. We're in this like keeper league. It's like super advanced. I guess you could say we have our own constitution, our own set of rules. It's a big deal, man. It's, oh, uh, geez, it's fun, yeah. man. The guys take it seriously. And like, you think we do it for money? No, we just do it. Cause we all love baseball. Um, you're just doing it for pride. pride. Is there a trophy or anything? Well, there is a trophy, but you also get naming rights of the league for the next year. Oh, okay. Big time. Name, 
somebody at, you get to name it after a player, a favorite player of yours, maybe from an old team or something like that. Um, so for the entire season, it then becomes such and such Memorial fantasy baseball league or something. Right. Jordan, I think I'm saying that right. I think. Um, That's so awesome. Uh, who yeah. started it? Um, I don't know who officially started it, but a guy I went to college with knows that I love baseball a lot, knew that I love baseball a lot. And I kept asking him, Hey, you ever got a spot open up your league? You let me know. You let me know. And finally one opened up like when I was late in college, early, right out of college. And then another one opened up. So then I called Jordan because I knew he would be serious about it. Like, that's the thing. We don't want like schlups in this league. Yeah. Um, so, and again, eight of the 10 guys were live. So uh, that was pretty cool to see. Um, that is wild, man. That's commitment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but real quick, dude, I want to switch gears real quick. And we can okay. talk about your weekend next, Jones. But we got to update people on the Why Not Us Bracket Challenge. Oh, yeah. We got to do that. Also... Maybe before that, we got to hear about your trip to Vegas too. Oh, yes. We yes. didn't do an episode last week, and I'm super curious. And we didn't get to talk in the group chat either about it. So we don't know anything about your trip. Jordan may. Well, for starters, I'm not rich. We uh, did not finish in the top 80. We need to finish in the top 80 out of about 800 to make the money. Uh, we did not do so. We finished around 400th something. Um, it was a great time, great learning experience. The guy I went with, you know, he was very hospitable, brought me out there essentially. But in my opinion, I don't know how seriously he took the uh, event. Um, it, I, I don't know. It, we, it was our first time. That's all. We'll leave it at that. So we just didn't do well. You know, I. it was, it was hard. It was different. Um, you know, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's like a full day, eight hours. But um, it was a great learning experience. A lot of fun to see people that are also as interested in horse racing and enjoy it as much as like I do. Mm -hmm. um, so it was fun, man. It was fun. I didn't end up winning any money otherwise, really. Um, so it was a good time. I just wish we maybe had won something or had more fun with it. Food was great. The setting was cool being around, like, like I said, 800 people, like, cause literally there's just massive screens and I, I took some pictures. I should have posted them, but literally I was so focused on that every day yeah. that we're, and any the night before because you're trying to handicap a little bit you know the night before um but yeah man it was a great time i just i was out there too long that was the only problem i got there wednesday got back to the following tuesday the event ended sunday and if i could do it again i'd either leave sunday night or leave monday morning um but great time got to walk the strip hadn't been out to vegas in two or three years so um yeah was, man it was was fun. it fun hanging out with your uh the buddy you went with it, it was and he's he's a, he's a character so um he just was a lot to like live with for five six days i'll be frank with just you like party a lot or what what's that just like partied a lot or, or no what? no he's very like set in his ways i'm talking like he gets up at 7 a.m turns on every single light turns on the tv and i'm like dude i'm still in bed here buddy like <laughs> i just <laughs> does he, that's what he does in his real life you know i was gonna say like, he's probably got kids he's already up no, I mean, he has kids. He does have older kids. He's an older guy. So, you know, without getting into a lot of the details, he's been through a lot, been through a lot. Um, so, but again, he was, like I said, it was great hanging out with him. He just is very set in his ways. And uh, he's a character, man. I, I could, I'll could, send you a photo, Jones, of the guy. He's just, he's something else, man. Um, everything's, everything's something, if that makes any sense. If you guys kind of catch my drift, everything's a, something happens, it's an issue. Oh, this happened. I'm like, dude, just, just have fun. We're here. You know, he smokes, he also smokes like a pack a day, if not more. So he was upset about oh, how dear. Far, he was upset about how far he had to go out and go walk to smoke his cigarettes. And I was like, dude, we're here to gamble. Like we're here to gamble on this tournament. I said gamble, but we're here to like try to win this tournament. They wouldn't let him smoke in that room? No, no, heck no, dude. No, 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 no. It's like a ballroom. Like it holds events, you know? Um, uh, the damn what's, that? what's that? You can just go out to this casino and smoke. Yeah, but it was far away, man. Too far for him, you know? He was upset about it. And then I would, like, give him some winners like that ended up winning, right? Because it wasn't my entry. So, like, I was just there to, like, suggest things, you know, and try to help. Try to hey, give him my perspective on a horse. And, of course, I get a couple of them home. And he's like, why didn't you tell me? Like, why didn't you force me to go bet it? I'm like, dude, I just gave you my thoughts. I'm not going to make you go to the machine and punch the, the ticket in. Like... So that upsets him, and then he gets upset about that. And I'm like, dude, come on. So, sounds like an in interesting experience, dude. Like, I swear to you, if you didn't know us, like, you would think we were the odd couple because there's other guys at our table, right? Like, 
there was one, two, three, four, five other guys playing at our table in addition to us. We had six guys plus myself for a table at eight, eight that had eight chairs. And I'm sure these guys were just like, who the hell are these two, like, just going at it, you know, about, you know, because, you know me, I'm not going to, like, I'm going to bite my tongue, but I'm also going to be a little, like, you know, you know, witty about it and get back at them a little bit. You know, I'll give it to you. Uh, if you give it to me, I'll give it back to you. Um, so, but yeah, could... I, it just was fun. We didn't win, man. It was hard. It's hard. That's the biggest thing I learned. It's like, you just got to get lucky. Do you um, care to explain the process of handicapping horses? Dude, it, there's so many different things you can do uh, for those out there that are interested in maybe checking it out. And I, I'm still even, like I'd say, learning as I go, right? There's so many different angles you can take, Jones. You look at horses that go fast in the beginning. You look at horses that close late. Um, you look at what they ran in practice, we'll call it, right? I'm, I'm using terms I think hopefully people can understand more than what the actual terms are. Um, you look at the horse's past results. You look how long the horse has been on a layoff. You look what the horse did last time out against similar competition. Um, a lot of times a horse will drop in class and that's a different thing. You look at the distance, the horse races. Um, there's so many different factors. You look at the pedigree of the horse, you know, who's its, who's its mare, who's its sire. Um, you look at who trains the horse. If it's been claimed, and when I say claimed, it means they change, tra they change trainers, they changed owners. There's just so many different angles and things to consider um, when you do it. And I know that's a brief mm. little bit of it, but uh, it's a lot, man. It really is. Um, and then you look at the surface, right? The surface is they run on dirt. They run on grass. Was it raining? So it could have mm -hmm. been muddy. The turf could have been bad. Like there's, there, there's tapita, which is like fake turf. Um, so and then sometimes the post matters, Jones. The inside post at some tracks is faster than the outside posts. There's a horse, uh, there's a horse track out in Santa Anita. It's called Santa Anita out in California. And they swear to you on certain times of the day, Jones, if it's high tide or low tide, the inside post is faster than the out. You got people like, you know, it's just like anything with luck involved. Right. Um, and then the jockey matters a ton. I didn't even mention that. I don't think yeah. like, right. So it matters who's riding the horse. Like, you know who the best jockeys are. That's, that's a given. Right. But like, you know, that day you don't know, right. A lot of these are smaller Hispanic people. Uh, so like, a lot of Hispanic guys, there's actually a bunch of females that are getting into it, which are great. Um, but yeah, man, like some people swear that like some of these guys are fixing these races. So, you know, and then you're coming down the stretch, Jones. And if you bump into a horse, then there's an inquiry and the horse can be taken down. There's so many different variations and variables that can happen in a horse race. It's kind of wild to think about. So how does the uh, competition work? Does somebody already decide and then you all are sort of... Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So there were two days of competition for us in the first round, we'll call it, right? Uh, the first day and the second day, you bet on 18 races. Eight of them, everybody bets on together. So you have 10 races to choose from. Um, and if your horse either wins or places, you're going to win money. So that's first or second. So on the first day, we had about 55 bucks going into the last race, so which was like top 100. So we were doing like pretty decent. And then going, and then the last race came in, like a horse came in that everybody had to play that race and we didn't have it. So we got jumped and ended up around 200 that the first day. Um, so uh, I think the first day there were 44 races we had to choose from for our 10 races, our 10 optionals, so the eight mandatory, 10 optionals. Second day was the same exact, um, same exact thing. You had 18 races, eight of them were the ones that are mandatory, 10 of them were optional, except instead of there being 44 races to choose from, there was like 85 to choose from. So we're talking double the amount of like work we had to do or try to figure out, you know, what, what track we wanted to choose, what race we want to choose. Because the thing is, Jones, you don't want to, you don't want to choose a favorite, right? That's not going to pay out anything. You know, you mm -hmm. choose a one-to-one -one favorite on a four, on a $2 bet, you're only going to make $2. So you're going to win $4 total, right? Mm -hmm. you don't want that right you're going to try you're going to try to find a horse that's three four five six to one and then you're also going to try to find a race that you think a long shot's going to win so it, it's a lot of strategy involved and then some people also have a second entry so the person that won the event he had two entries one finished first one finished fourth the guy won like 950 grand oh my god <laughs> yeah but there was eight hundred thousand dollars that won for first place oh my gracious and sunday is the semifinals and the finals and those are a little different. And then there was a consolation bracket on Sunday that we got into in the first place, won like 20 grand out of that, but we weren't any good in the consolation either. Um, so it was fun, man. It was great. It, it was a learning experience. I definitely would go back. Um, love my buddy. Not try to go back with him, but um, he's probably a big fan of the pod. I hope he's not, but um, he's a great <laughs> guy. I just, 
I think he'd tell you the same thing. Maybe I was just like, by the end of it, I was like, dude, you just are a lot. And he knows he's a lot. So, um, just wouldn't go on vacation with him at all. Dude, I just like really, I'm bleeding, dude. I just ripped something out of my mouth. You see that? Oh, my gosh, Joey. But yeah, so that was my trip to Vegas. (laughs) Can't believe your buddy just like gets mad that he can't rip heaters where he wants to rip heaters. Dude, he everything's a something, man. Everything's, but he's like, I said, too long of a walk. He probably gets out of breath going there. No, and that's the thing, man. He's got a bad shoulder. Um, (laughs) so yeah, dude, it it cracks me up. But he's a great, like I said, just salt of the earth. We'll give this shirt off his back when he can, you know, that kind of thing. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, we were staying in the um, Bally's Horseshoe, which is now the Horseshoe, really, is what they rebranded it to. And then then Sunday night, we flipped over to the Flamingo. So, because they paid for four nights. So, um, yeah, man, we had a great time. Sounds fun, man. I can't wait to see yeah. the pictures. Um, and send, send them to me. You don't have to right now, unless you already are. But um, I'll take a look at them and uh, we'll post some of them. Yeah, if I got anything good, that's the thing. I, I tried to do a good job of it, but then I like just got some of the zone. So, started zoning, man. Um, Joey or uh, Jordan, how was the uh, trip to DC? Did you enjoy yourself? It was good. I mean, yeah, it was, we drafted, uh, you know, did our draft, played some golf. Um, I'm glad I live below the Mason Dixon line. There's way too many people on the road, traffic's too oh congested. Gosh, I bet it's crazy <laughs> in DC. How was the course that you all played? I mean, it, the, I guess we were talking about that in the car. It's, like, kind of gimmicky, but also, too, it's like early March up there. I mean, like, nothing's the greens aerated. Huh? Were the greens aerated? No, it's a little too early for that. They'll usually do that late spring and then uh, early, early, late summer, late summer, August. They'll probably shoot them. I hate playing golf when there's an area to greens. I know it's important, but it just like screws the experience, I think. I don't know. I would like to see that course when everything's in full bloom. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty bare when you send a picture in the group chat. If they're going to do aim and corner, I want to see the azaleas in full bloom. And I don't know. Oh, yeah. They were decently bloom, but I mean, like starting to bloom, but like. I want I want I want to see it when it's like fully green and stuff. Tell you what, there's plenty of azaleas in North Carolina. Like when we go to Durham, they're everywhere. Every house has them. Really? Oh, everything's yeah. or so. I mean, we've had or we've had uh, everything start to bloom super early, but yeah, it's the weather has been like that. <laughs> All the plants have been confused. It's like, well, it was 80 degrees last week, and now it's 20. What's going on here, guys? We're blackberry winter. We're about out of the out of the um, cold spell. I was freezing yesterday and today. I think this morning it was like uh, below twenty here. Oh wow! Yeah, it was like that eighteen is, or nineteen. That is way cold, sir. Uh, very cold. And mm-hmm. up here in this apartment, we just have like one of those mini split units, you know, up above on like the wall. Uh-huh. And it's not powerful enough to really like warm up the room when it's that cold. Yeah. So we were freezing. Okay. I'll have I'm, look- snow. I'm looking at photos real quick, Jones. I forgot. We also went to an NCAA uh, Pac-12 basketball turn- championship tournament game. Two games, uh, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. We saw UCLA play Colorado. And then we saw Oregon play Washington State. So, wow. Um, yeah, we fit a lot in, man. Again, sorry to interrupt you there. Um, no, that's cool. But uh, well, yeah. uh, March has been a madness. <laughs> that's oh, for sure. right, right. Um, I was saying I was pulling up the bracket here. First off, I pull up my my name literally has little ice cubes by it. Like as I look it up, it just says ice cubes because of how poorly I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, um, Joey, but I think let's see. Yeah, you've got Gonzaga. You and I both have Gonzaga. And then yeah, uh, me, Hank, that's you do actually me. have Hank's bracket in there. I like that. Dude, we put it in there, man. Um, and he he picked the upset. He had Fairly Dickinson over uh, or somebody. He had one of the upsets, I think. 
No, he had, he had FDU, yeah. Gosh, yeah. what a smart dog. I knew something. Yeah, Emily looks like she's in first right now. Um, Henry is uh, my buddy David's son. He's in second. Uh, who's this? I don't know who the gr- Jeff, grimy. Jeff Grimmy. That is my buddy that I played baseball with in college. Okay. Big fan of the pod. He's probably listening to this. Jeff, what's up, man? Uh, Love it. Hope, hope you lose. Also, I'm playing <laughs> I'm playing golf with him next month. So that's going to be exciting. He's going to come down to Eastern Kentucky. We're going to play some golf at Stonecrest. I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh then Jordan, uh Woodsy and Webb are all tied for fourth. Um uh, I'm not sure who bracket buster it Ooh, is. Oh, Jordan's got Houston. Yeah, look uh, how many how many po- points I got left. I mean, if everything plays out, I'm winning this thing. Jordan's got a great shot. Um and then Liam, who is a former SID at Duquesne, he's the man up here in uh, Pittsburgh with me. He's in eighth. Uh, Shrewd Farms, not sure who that is. They're in ninth here. That's yours truly, baby. Oh, that's you, Jones. Okay, there we go. Uh, then we've got Dwight, uh, Dwight Shrewd, Shrewd Farms. And I created that name like years ago. I can't even tell you how long ago I created that, probably in high school. And I signed into my account, somehow remembered the password, and that name was still there. That's great, dude. So you you just were like, I still have it, and you it's kept still, it. That's a- yeah, I'm just like, I don't have time to change it right now or to think about it. I'm just going to leave it. Screw it. Let's go. Love it. We've got uh, Casey Clark tied with, excuse me, Rusty McBuckets, who is Taylor Blue, former SID Rad, at Radford, Jordan's employee, uh, tied for ninth with Casey. Then we've got Joey's Bacon Barrel. Excuse me. They've tied with you, Jones. Then we got Joey's Bacon Barrel, which is Casey Clark, who's <laughs> avid pod listener. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Or that's oh well. yeah, he just left us. He left us a comment too. We were talking about. Oh no, Joey's challenge. Bacon Barrel Zach. I'm sorry, Joey's Bacon Barrel Zach Jones uh, Jordan. Oh yeah. really, Zach? Hill? Yeah, that's yeah. Zach. Zach, what I'm up, sorry. dude? Um, and then Catherine, which I'm pretty sure Caser's 23, which I'm 90 percent sure is Casey Rissmiller, is in 12th. Uh, Luke Blanchett 13th. Uh, Aaron's winning bracket. Man, I don't know some people. Who that is? Just like a random fan of the pod. What's up? Aaron? Yeah. Um, they're uh 14th. Jordan's lovely wife and I are tied for 15th. Then uh the, the thousands follower, which has got to be Casey. Casey Clark's somewhere in here, I swear. Um, yeah, that's got it. He left us a comment too. Did you see that on Instagram when we launched that we were doing a bracket? He goes, "Thank God, I've been waiting for six for uh, like six days for this or something." That sounds right. That sounds like him. Um, uh, and then at 18th. <laughs> Is uh, my dog Hank? Shout out Hank. Um, so that's a Hank summary. Of- is not going to win. Uh, no, I know, but that's all right. That's a summary of the men's bracket, folks. I know you guys all can see oh, this yeah. online, but you know what? We're going to talk about it now because this is fun. And then uh, the women's bracket, which Joey screwed up on, and Ooh, doesn't even Jordan. have an entry. Uh, yeah, you're zero. Um, so I don't know what happened. List. Don't know what happened, but uh, apparently I didn't fill it out all the way correctly. So. I've got nothing. Jordan, I did fill out a second one, though, and I have 390 points. I know you and I were talking about tonight. How many points do you have? 460. So, yeah, you would definitely be beating me. Can you add? Um, I guess you can't add if you've already got a bracket somewhere else. Can you add it to another group, or does it have to be before? I I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, So, Jordan's on top of the women's one. Uh, Andy Webb's in second. Uh, The Lost Bourbon, there's Casey Clark, Bottle is in third. So maybe Casey only did a men's one, a women's one, excuse me. No way. Um, Casey and Emily are tied for second. Uh, Blue is in fifth. Casey Rissmiller is in sixth. We've got Jones in seventh. We've got Elton John's biggest fan, which is Zach, because Zach and I met up at the Elton John. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, Liam in eighth as well with Zach. Man, Liam's great. What a guy. And then me in tenth because um, I did not freaking do one, which is a shame. So, but I, I would have 370 points, we'll just say. Um, and I had South Carolina winning the other bracket. But yeah, so people who have signed up for the thing, we appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Um, I don't know if my buddy Eric might be in there too on one of these. But uh, Jones, Emily was asking me tonight if she won. We clarify this for the listeners. Okay. okay. The winner of both is getting something, correct? They're both going to get, men's and yes. women's is going to get yes. the coffee, correct? Yeah. So we'll send two packages out, one for the men's, one for the women's. Yeah, and neither um, us three obviously can't win. So if Jordan ends up winning the women's bracket, we'll just pick like second place. We'll be the winner of our yeah. challenge. Awesome, awesome. And I I meant to text you guys about this, but I might have procured us 
a guest in that for next week if we're interested. Oh, yeah. Um, no, 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 it's yes. just somebody we talked about. Yes. It's somebody we talked about in the past, but I was I caught up with them on my drive, uh, on one of my drives because I actually drove all over the ha- freaking states the past uh couple of days. But I did I said they said hey I said hey we should have you on you know uh, we would enjoy having you on not that we wouldn't enjoy having some of our other friends on, but um yeah we'll we'll leave it at that we don't know if they'll come on or not we'll we'll leave people in suspense, but um talk to them think they're interested I think they'd be a fun guest to have not that our other friends wouldn't be fun. It's Joe's but, uh, friend John Smoltz. Let's be real. This guy's more fun than everybody else. Let's be honest. I'll be honest with you guys. Do you know my man? What's that? Do you know my buddy Lane? You know my buddy? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I had to figure that out in the group text. Jordan was like sending a text and I was like, is Joey okay? But it ended up like being a joke or something. No. Yeah. I, I, dude, I, I forget that people know my friends sometimes, man. I just, I I don't know. Give the listener some context here of what we're talking about, Jordan. So Joe Joe he was sweating out a game or something. He was talking about a basketball game with his buddy, and his phone died, and he needed his buddy's phone number, and no one had it other than Emily. But Luke made a joke that Joey always says, "You know my buddy Lane." Like that's how he introduces him. You know my buddy Lane. And I've said it multiple times. And I'm guilty of it. Like, and they all know him because we all went to college together. When I say to these people, and um, yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> so George Joey, next to the great group, memory. trying to find my buddy Lane's cell phone number. Um so, so your phone did your phone really die, by the way? Yeah, it just was out of I didn't try I forgot to bring a charger with me to DC, so it was out of battery on the golf course, and Lane and I were worried about a game. So which we ended up winning, thankfully. Um, so I just was trying to call him about it and see what was up. So Joey's phone seven. What's that? Your phone died on hole seven. Yeah, whole seven. Yeah, yeah. Mm, so, um, speaking of phones, I just bought a new one finally. Uh, it's been oh yeah, like you sent us a picture of it. It was fantastic. Four or five years, I guess, since I bought a phone. Uh, yeah, the new ones are legit. Too legit. That four K video, man. The cinematic, uh, cinematic view that you get looks yeah. like a looks like a movie. It looks fantastic. I love you send the photo of Felix. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that um I guess the new one, it's got these like look at these lenses, man. Like what I'm what y'all are seeing right now, it's like nothing revolutionary because it's been out so long. But these three sure. lenses, yeah. this is like better than some like cameras you can buy, like Canon cameras. Really? So it's like that that it's, high tech. It's 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 high tech. It's good. It's good. I bet eventually, like, there won't be a need for some of those, like, running gun cameras, like a GoPro or, you know, some of those, like, smaller cameras that a lot of people use for, like, vlogging or stuff like that. Like, Uh cell phone is so good now and so advanced. Like, I don't see eventually a need for some of those other brands, but I do have a GoPro, which is nice, but I'm seeing this cell phone now, uh, has been pretty solid for stuff like that. They need to make it where you can take it underwater. I don't know that that's happened yet. You can Dude, buy them. Yeah. You can buy the case, yeah. But, you know, the GoPro, you can just take it underwater. You don't have to have any special case over top of it or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else, real fellas? Quick, real quick update, real quick. too. I got to drive to Houston on Thursday. Jeez, oh, Pete, Joey, you um, are burning up the roads, man. Dude, so I got a phone call from Emily's grandfather about two Mondays ago. And he's like, hey, would you have any interest in driving my car to Houston? And I was uh, like, well, let me look at no. it. I'll get back. <laughs> so I fire up Google real quick and I see the map and I'm like, all right, I can do Nashville to Houston. So Emily's aunt and uncle are moving to Houston temporarily for a job. And uh, they need childcare help. So her grandparents have volunteered to, you know, get down there. And he was looking at like, you know, renting a car, which is too expensive right now. Mm-hmm. And then he was looking at shipping the car. And then I guess uh, Emily's uncle, who is, his name's John Mark. He's the man, he's French. Was like, why don't you ask Joey if he'll drive the, your car down for you? So here we are. And I told them, I was like, anything that'll get me out of work, man, I'm in. So uh, I'm driving to Houston on uh, Thursday. 
That so. is amazing. How many hours is that from Pitt? 20 hours. So I'm gonna oh stop my in, God. So going to stop in Nashville, which is eight hours from Pittsburgh. So I'll gain oh. it out going to Nashville. Uh, my buddy Jamie Givens is graciously going to host me and have me stay at his house on f- Thursday night after work. And then Friday, what's that? Sunshine, is that you said? And then Friday night, I'll get up. Friday morning, excuse me, I'll get up and then drive to Houston and hopefully get there around 7 or 8, and then I'll fly back Saturday morning. Joey, I got an idea. Yeah. If you can capture some video on your trip, just like vlog some of it, I'll edit it together and post it on YouTube. For sure, for sure. I can do that. I think that would be great. Yeah. Um, And like I said, I just wanted to do it, and anything that will give me an excuse to not be at work, I was all for it. He's like, we'll pay you. And I was like, that's fine. I don't really care about the money. I just want to help them out because they want to have a car while they're down there. They're already, they already have driven one car down there. Uh, but Emily's grandparents are in their eighties and they're awesome people. Um, so I said, you know what? I'm, I'm in, I'll help you out. So the other kicker is I'm going to have to go, go get the car at some point. So <laughs> I'm going to have to do it. Golly. I'm going to have to do it on the way back as well. But um, they're flying out Thursday morning. So they would like it either Thursday or Friday. So um, yeah. Man, that, are you going to try to, how far are you going to drive at once? Eight hours Thursday, 12 hours Friday. Oh, mercy. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan's making eyes at me for those not watching on the, on YouTube. So. I told you that Saturday in golf cart. I was like, I don't like this one bit. I don't like this <laughs> no, well, the, a couple of years ago, I guess. Yeah. A couple of years ago we, when we weren't getting on flights, we drove to Florida and it was like, you know, from here, 12 hours or something like that, maybe a little bit less. And I was like, I never want to do this again, ever. Really? We've done it, you know, several times. But when you can get on an Allegiant flight and get there in an hour and a half, you know, it's like, what are we doing here? We got super high five. You guys ready? Unless somebody's burned your bacon. I guess I could have said my buddy might burn my bacon for a couple of days there, man. I don't, and I, you guys know me. Yeah. I like. He's I don't a, get. He's getting a bad rap. I don't get like that upset about things, but man, I was like, dude, I would rather be with anybody but you for some of this. And we had fun at times. <laughs> Other times, I was like, dude, stop uh, me. Oh boy, Jordan, any any bacon burned? Uh, no, I think we're we're all good. I think we're all, all good. good. I'm trying to think if anybody's burned my bacon lately. Oh, this, oh, I got it. This construction project. I just want it to be done. I'm, I'm done being in this apartment. I'm done with all the stuff that's coming with this insurance adjustment and everything. I'm just like, and they screwed it up. You know, they screwed up our contents adjustment. It's actually supposed to be more than what they gave us. They screwed up like how much they gave us on certain items. Uh-huh. Didn't even have the correct item in there for some of them big ones like okay. our bed a tipper a king size tempurpedic bed uh they put a queen size bed in there which is like a huge expense difference so, yeah we're yeah. talking a couple thousand bucks right yeah more yeah yeah like six thousand uh whoa 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 big big time uh sleep investment there which it was a hand-me-down for us but still they got it wrong mm-hmm. um but anyways yeah that's burning up bacon All right. Easter is on the horizon and today's super high five is super high thing, super high five things in your Easter basket. Mm. I don't recall getting many Easter baskets. I'm just going to just throw that out there and be honest. Um, Really? Yep. We are doing one, however, for Felix. And maybe I just don't remember getting, um, an Easter basket probably did when I was a kid at some point, they just stopped giving them to you, you know? Yeah. But I've got a couple things in mind that I would put in there, but I can't go first. I'll just say that. Okay. I'm still thinking. I'll go. Uh, number five, a chocolate bunny. Um, you never ate the whole thing. It was way too big. You bit into it and you feel like you're going to break your teeth, but it's like nostalgic to have a chocolate bunny and um, an Easter basket. Um, number four, and this, this comes in every Easter basket, but it's that old fake green, like grass they, they put in it. Like yeah. I had to, got, it gets everywhere. It's aggravating, but it's in every, it's in the bottom of every Easter basket. Uh-huh. Number, th- 
was um, Airheads. I always got Airheads in my Easter basket. Um, mm. Number two was um, I'm trying to remember what they uh, what was it? Fun Dip. You dip the white mm-hmm. stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always had fun dip, and number one for me was my, my parents always put a or my my mom. Let me phrase that. My mom always put a VHS tape. I always got like a new <laughs> movie in um in my Easter basket. And I just want to mention VHS tapes because those are the good old days, and I don't even know if we if I even know where a working VCR is at today. Dude, right, right. I know where yeah. several several working VCRs are. Uh, over at our little like studio space that we film videos sometimes. We've got like five old TVs that still work that have VHS in it. That's awesome. Pretty cool. Um, I'll go next then, Jones. Um, number five for me, guys, we always got beanie babies in our Easter baskets. So that is a memory now. Okay. So that was always like a little thing that we look forward to. I will never forget. Like two of the first ever Beanie Babies I got were like Patty the Patapus and Mel the Koala. And I swear to you, I got them in my Easter basket. Um, because like most of y'all probably, the Easter basket you had to find around the house. Like that was the other thing. The Easter bunny always hid your basket. So well, that got out of the bed. So you had to find yours. I always had to find my Easter basket. Correct. Correct. It was always hidden around the house, hidden by the Easter bunny. Uh, number four for me was Peeps. I, I didn't necessarily love the Peeps. But it was always in your Easter basket, whether it be the pink ones, the yellow ones, the blue ones. I feel like those were the three OGs. Um, so that was number four for me. Number three for me was always sweet tarts. We always had some sort of sweet tarts. And usually it was like the like bunny or rabbit, excuse me, rabbit or chick shaped sweet tarts. If anybody remembers those, I cannot find them for the life of me anywhere. Um, but there's like a 30 animal too, I swear to you. It was the rabbits, the chicks, and something else. I really can't freaking remember. Uh, what they were. Uh, number two, like Joe, like Jordan, and I had down chocolate bunny. Um, we always had something like that in there, whether it was the chocolate bunny, whether it was, you know, some sort of Reese's cup or something like that, or some sort of pastel colored M and M's, um, or something like that. And number one for me, what do you find in an Easter basket? You find your Easter eggs, right? Um, so we had always mm. would dye our Easter eggs a couple days before, and uh, in the Easter eggs there would either be some chocolate, the plastic ones that have chocolate or maybe some money or something in them, uh, like you were on Easter egg hunt, or you would just know it was your basket if you forgot which basket was yours. Because again, you know, you only look at your Easter basket once a year, right? So you would always maybe find your brother's Easter basket, but it would have his egg in it or, you know, and let you know that, oh, that's not my basket. It's Matt's or James's. So um, yeah, number one for me was Easter eggs. This is why we do these. This is bringing back some memories. And now I know what my super high five is um all right number five a beanie baby because i do remember that getting those in my easter basket yeah uh so that's going to be my number five number four the cadbury egg Uh ah yes the cadbury egg uh number three the easter eggs that was something that we had too the either the dyed eggs or we would have like a little plastic egg with five bucks in it or whatever uh it was like one of those surprise things you know um Number two, Reese's, the Reese's egg, big time, big time. Uh, I like to eat those cold, you know, either in the freezer or in the refrigerator. Either one, mm-hmm. beautiful. Uh, and number one, I'm going to go with the Peep. I'm a, I'm a big Peep fan. I'm just going to be honest with you. A lot of people of don't like them. Uh, I love them. I'm just going to throw that out there. Big time Peep guy. Of course you are. Speaking of sweet tarts, what was the other one that rivaled it? Wasn't it called like Shockers or something like that? Well, they're Shock Tarts. Shock Spree. Tarts. Spree. 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 Yeah, that's Spree. another one. The Chewy Shock ones? Tarts and Sweet Tarts. Shock Tarts was like a Chewy Spree, but was like, a, it was like, sour, you know, had, it? had some sour to it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Would always go to the bookstore at my middle school and get candy. Awesome. So. Yeah. Good memories here, fellas. I've just like had this whole thing in my childhood just now. Yeah. Can't deal with I'm not a marshmallow guy. Fair enough. Gotta get, gotta get on the peep board. If you're if you're on the peep train, leave us a comment. That's episode 26 and another edition of Why Not Us. Enjoy it, boys. Goodbye. Thanks for stopping by and lending us your ears today. If you like what you heard, check us out on Instagram and TikTok at Why Not Us Media, or stop by our YouTube page, the Why Not Us Media Podcast, or hit up our website at www. 
www.whynotus.media.